Joining us now is Ojinika Ojiokwe with stories trending around the world. Vice Hello, Jinix. Good morning, Dr. Abati. Good morning. How are you this morning with your legendary Good. introduction? <laughs> Good morning, Bimbai. How are you this Very morning? well in your sound. Good. He knows why he's laughing. Good morning, Rufai. How are you this morning? Morning, Oji. Yes. Ojinika Ojiokwe. <laughs> well, all right. Well, good morning to you viewers. Let's begin what's trending. Following up on the recent kidnappings in Nigeria, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu on Tuesday said that those involved in kidnappings must be treated as terrorists. The president made the comments at the Ramadan dinner with members of the federal judiciary led by Chief Justice of Nigeria, Olukayode Ariwola. Tinubu condemned the reprehensible acts perpetrated by kidnappers across the country, stating that those who resort to kidnapping children are cowards and incapable of confronting the might of the Nigerian armed forces. Kidnappers are terrorists and they will make insults. That is the way we pursue them. That is the way we must speak to them. And That is a fact that we are facing currently unless we take very strong action against those people. They become cowardly, they have been degraded, they look for soft targets, they go to backyard of uh, you know uh, local schools and kidnap children and create this affection. We must treat them equally as terrorists uh, in order to really get rid of them. And I promise you, we are going to get rid of them. All right, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu there, almost re reoccurring his uh, wife's statement, I believe, last week, when she called for capital punishment for terrorists. I mean, terror the bandits have been termed terrorists for a while, so I don't think this is something new. But I, you know, I during that meeting, like I said earlier, the Chief Justice of Nigeria was part of that dinner. And there's this picture that is, you know, circulating on social media where the Chief Justice is seen, you know, uh, giving the president a handshake there, like almost bowing to him. I mean, people are asking, you know, if it's uh, the Chief Justice of the U.S., can you see that type of, uh, you know, courtesy? But I mean, that's the rhetoric out there. But, you know, we're Nigerians, Dr. Abati, isn't that right? You would see, I mean, Tinubu is 72 years old, right, isn't he? I'm asking you, I told you I was coming to you. <laughs> I told you that earlier. The president's uh, birthday is yes. on uh, Friday. Right. And, uh, just, yeah. President Tinubu is 72 years old, right? Well, that, that's his... Uh, that's the that, that's his... Uh, that's the birthday he's celebrating yes. on Friday. What's for Tinubu? He's answer 72. Answer question, Dr. Abad. That's what yes, he's on the INEC, INEC uh, form. That's his age. Uh, you know, according to INEC, he will be 72. And as for the uh, uh, Chief Justice, right. you know... Uh, you know, just uh, bowing slightly to him. Mm -hmm. I mean, wait a moment. I mean, that was uh, an IFTA event. The mm -hmm. uh, president had invited judicial officers to come and breakfast with him. So the CJN uh, bowing to him with respect. I, I won't make any big deal out of it. It's not as if uh, his, his lordship was in a courtroom. Uh, he was in another man's premises for IFTA. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, simple... Uh, courtesy, courtesy, right. You know, and in any case, even if he did that, according to Yoruba culture, which you yourself alluded to. This is why I asked yeah, the, 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 the CGN, the CGN is younger than the president. Oh, he is younger than he, the president. He's younger, so that yeah. was the he's, he's, he's younger yeah, than so, the president. Yeah, yeah. president. Yeah. So yeah. in uh, Yoruba culture, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Even when people are one year older than you. Yeah. Okay. After all, when we were in secondary school, they would tell you 365 days right. uh, is not a joke. You know, uh, so that there's nothing about that. Right. But the more important thing is uh, the president saying that, you know, bandits are terrorists. Right. People who instill fear, people who collect ransom, people who impose hardship on other people within the community, they deserve to be treated as terrorists. Yes. And there is a law to that effect, the Terrorism Prohibition and Prevention Act, you know, which stipulates penalties. Mm -hmm. And the reason... You know, I think the uh, statement by the president is important. Is that we have been in this same country 
where terrorists were being given uh, Ashebi, yes. under the principle that uh, they will be rehabilitated and reintegrated into society. In fact, I think at a point, government was even saying some of the uh, repentance, so they said, mm. you know, bandits and terrorists will be integrated into the Nigerian army. So President Tinubu is signaling yeah. that he is not going in that direction. Yeah. A criminal is a criminal, yeah. and the law must take its course. They are, I, mean, they I think complete, on that score, we agree with absolutely. you. Absolutely. They are complete cowards. They are kidnapping children. I mean, you, you cannot be more cowardly than that. Well, the governor of Zamfara State, Dauda Lawal, who met with President Bola Ahmed Tinubu on Tuesday, raised the alarm on the escalating banditry in his state, urging immediate intervention from the federal government to quell the violence. Speaking to state house correspondents, the governor expressed concern over the recent surge in attacks and stress the urgency of the situation. If nothing is done in Zamfara, I don't think we'll be able to solve the situation in the entire northern Nigeria. As you know, most of the guys or the girls or the people that were kidnapped ended up in Zamfara State, and that is not good for us. And therefore, we're doing everything to change the narratives. And that is one of the reasons why I'm here today, and I complain to Mr. President and uh, I have his assurance that something drastic will be done as quickly as possible to take care of the situation. Now, this is reassuring. We all know that Zamfara State is the hotbed for uh, a hotspot for uh, terrorists. Meanwhile, the uh, Nigerian army has reportedly released more than 200 suspects who had been detained over Boko Haram terrorist activities. The military said the suspects had been cleared of links to the Boko Haram sect. The detainees were said to have been handed over to the Borno state government on Tuesday for proper reintegration into the society. The development comes in the wake of the controversy surrounding the release of 137 school children abducted in Kaduna. Obviously, you will know that this will raise a lot of eyebrows, but let me just take one tweet and then we'll discuss the story. This is from Victor, who wrote, summary, 200 plus school children were abducted. Lesson, absence of government. 200 plus school children were conditionally released. Lesson, absence of principles. 200 Boko Haram detainees were released shortly after. Lesson, absence of sovereignty and authority. Vimbai, let me come to you on this story. As you can see here, yeah. people will try to connect the two yeah. in, because, I mean, it just basically happened. I tried to reach out to the Borno state government, and, you know, it does appear that these 200 uh, uh, people were not linked to Boko Haram. They've been put, you know, they've been screened, and they are going to be reintegrated into the society. But, of course, Nigerians will raise that alarm. Yeah, listen, it's optics, and we always talk about this. Absolutely. The optics, reading the room, could the timing had been right? Listen, if they're innocent, they're innocent. We mm -hmm. do hope that they've been through all the interrogations. What led them to being accosted in the first place? What led them to being considered suspects? Yeah. But on those children, uh, you know, yesterday we did have a little bit of a debate mm -hmm. um, concerning whether they'd been reunited with their parents. Mm -hmm. And the reports are that the parents are now coming out and saying 60, over 60 hours later, they still have not seen their children. Mm -hmm. So this is concerning because these children have gone through the worst type of trauma. Mm -hmm. We're parading them to score points, PR points, mm -hmm. yet nobody is thinking about their psycho psychological well-being. Imagine seeing all these strange faces, being surrounded by cameras, being surrounded by all these things. All you want to, de to do is see your parents. Right. Um, so th this is important. Let's leave you know, PR out of this. It's, let's be human. Let's be human, uh, which is my same sentiment with regards to these people. If they're innocent, the 200 people, yeah. great, then uh, they do deserve their freedom. Yes. However, I hope that we're able to get all the information right. required out of them. You're absolutely right. We did talk about that, and I did tell you that I reached out to people in the government house, and they did promise that the children had met with their parents. Well, the Kaduna State government has moved the released Kuriga school children to a facility where they will undergo psychosocial therapy and counseling before being handed over to their parents. The children were taken to the center shortly after they met with Governor Uba Sani at the government house. The arrangement, which is said to be under the supervision of the Ministry of Human Services and Social Development and the Ministry of Health, is to ensure that the rescued children are in good mental health and psychological condition before they will 
reunite with their families. So that's the uh, conversation. The children are in that center with the governor. And they did say that the, the parents are allowed to visit the children. I mean, that's, that's the information that I have, and that's what we're going with. Well, in the meantime. But that's not what Daily Trust is reporting. They will. Daily Trust has their sources, and the journalist is as good as their sources, correct? I mean, that's, that's the information that we have. Well, in the meantime, the Bishop of Catholic Diocese of Sokoto, Matthew Hassan Kuka, has asked the federal government to question those who claim close ties with bandits and to be decisive in dealing with insecurity ravaging the northern region of the country. The bishop made the comments on the sidelines of the 25th anniversary of Madonna University. It's clear that uh, the federal government at the highest level knows what is going on. At least the, the intelligence community has an idea. There are key Nigerians who are saying quite openly that they know more than we, than, than we think the rest of us know. And I think that it's a business of the federal government to find out those who claim to know where the bandits are and those who are collaborating and cooperating with the bandits. I mean, it's the greatest humiliation of our nation. We cannot... The psychological impact on this on our children is unacceptable. So for me, it's, a, it's, a, it's something that the security agencies, in collaboration with those that they say, the people who have said quite openly, okay, that they, that, that they know what is going on. And I think the federal government has the capacity to go after those people. The outspoken bishop, he's always hit the right notes. I mean, we have seen these people that, you know, say that they know where the bandits are, the hideouts are. It's important that he's calling for a thorough interrogation of these bandits. I know, Rufai, you want to speak, but should I take this before yeah, you, yeah. you, yeah, you speak? Well. In the meantime, Toko Mam Mamu, the publisher of Desert Herald, has given the federal government a seven-day ultimatum to retract allegations of terrorism financing against him. The federal government last week named Mamu as one of the suspects involved in terrorism financing in the country. Mamu was listed among 15 entities, including nine individuals and six bureau de change operators and firms. In a letter through his lawyers addressed to the Attorney General of the Federation, Mamu said no competent court of law has found him guilty of terrorism financing, adding that upon expiration of the ultimatum, he will seek redress in court. I mean, he's out okay. there. We did see that story so, last week about so, so these people what, what, and their terrorism financing. What Tuka Mamu is saying is that yes. They had no right to release them as a terrorist, you know, financier since their case was still in court. Mm. But in all fairness to the NFIU, when journalists pressed them further, representatives of the NFIU said they didn't know how that list got out. So there's been a denial of that list of terrorism financing. So the question now should be, who released that list in the first place? That's the question. Because that thing also came out to the press and all of that. Secondly, as regards, um, I'd like to just go through a sort of story. As regards... What's it called? What's the happening? The Daily Reporting from the Daily Trust. The Daily yeah. Trust. Mm -hmm. With due respect, we salute Ubasoni for what he's been able to do. But he should in turn not play politics with the process. The truth is, the parents have a right to be able to meet their children. Daily Trust is reporting that, you know, the Kogoro students are yet to reunite with reunite, their families. Yes. Reuniting with their family also means meeting their families. If they have set their eyes on their children. Because, see, Oji, let me even now make my case effectively. The last time this happened, I think it was the Kankara boy, the parents were there, and the reuniting happened. And you could see the joy. In fact, that was part of the optics. As they were leaving, releasing the children, they were going to meet their parents. So we should also look at that as a possibility of making this, you know, process quicker for them because we just want them you know because also that psychosocial support they are saying the healing will be faster when these children see some of their parents quicker right because well, that, i think daily trot is, is reporting perfectly they are yes. saying students yet to reunite with their family meeting uh, their parents because we did cover it live here on yeah. sunday where the parents were at the government house even waiting for the children so okay. we saw that story okay. as well and, so, and yeah. also the other side i want to talk about this delicious story is mm. this the bandit kingpin yellow jambros behind the abduction yes. so the question is that story, yeah. why have they not gone after this kingpin yellow jambros is he when he does another one again because now we can just quickly name like the question i asked the other day is that why is it that we don't go after them 
And, you know, for those that are quick to release, what is it called, you know, people that they say, okay, they were apprehended wrong. If they were innocent, yeah, fine. No. But we have also seen that the government dilly-dallying are not making up their mind on how they're going to fight money. And that's why Kuka was speaking that those yes. that have been, I mean, because apart from the meeting, the likes of Shea Gumi has talked about, we've interviewed Shea Gumi here increasingly, and we have heard his views about saying sort of, let's make reparations to these bandits. Let's see, all of us have suffered under development in this country. Let's not even go to my village here. Okay. All, right. All of us are suffering some level of underdevelopment. Right. Let's not make that as a case to now bolster this bank. But none of us have carried guns like this bandit right. and going to crime and criminal. Dr. Bart Number one, uh, what's his name? Bishop Matthew Azankuka spoke last weekend. Yes. It was after he spoke that uh, Shea Gumi yeah. was invited for conversation. So the question is, was the federal government listening, listening to, to yeah. Bishop Kuka? That's one. Number two, the uh, 200 persons that they say the military will release mm. because they are innocent. Well, a man is innocent until proven guilty under the laws of Nigeria. Absolutely. But what, we, what government should not do is to demonize people, mm. parade people, that you will now come back later and say, these people are innocent. I mean, in other crimes, you do your investigation first yeah. before you right. establish a yeah, case. Yeah. Not that you will have advertised people as potential uh, uh, terrorists, and then you will come back and say, oh, uh, they, they have not done anything wrong. So there's a problem with procedure. Number three, the issue about Tukomamo is that there's a lot of conviction you know, by media, media trial, trial yeah. yes. in this country. I, and that's the lesson of it. What he's saying is that he's been projected, you know, by a sanctions committee. That was a committee mm. that purportedly issued a list. And he's also in court, but no court of law has convicted him. If a man has not been convicted, you don't go about, you know, labeling him. So th this is just a caution, both for journalists and also for government uh, officials. All right, we'll take another story. Senate President Gatsulak Babio, who attended the 148th Assembly of the Inter-Parliamentary Union in Geneva, Switzerland, on Monday, took the opportunity to visit the office of the Director General of the World Trade Organization, Dr. Ngozio Konjoiwela, where he discussed boosting the exportation of primary products from Nigeria and Africa in general. I took the opportunity of this meeting uh, to pay a courtesy call on an icon and uh, one of the greatest Nigerian exports, very positive export to the rest of the world. Uh, our distinguished sister, Okonjo Iwela, who happens to be the Director General of the World Trade Organization. And uh, we came to uh, once uh, thank her for the great job she's doing for the entire world and then the policies put in place to uh, streamline and ensure uh, the workability of world trade and also to see our office and also encourage our staff and thank them for supporting her. But during the meeting, Senate President Gotsulak Babio called for an immediate ceasefire in the Gaza Strip. Akbabio told the assembly that collective action must be taken to end the war to prevent further death of children. He also emphasized the need to set aside ego for peace, insisting that the assembly session must not conclude without taking action to achieve a ceasefire. This is a lone voice from Nigeria. We tried our best in Angola and we failed to lend a collective voice towards what is happening in Gaza. Today, the world is very expectant. We must drop ego. It has nothing to do with which country brings a proposal. The basic tenets of humanity demand that we live here with resolution for the rest of the world to show that we have hum human feelings in us. We have children who are dying, even as we are talking now. We have people who cannot see water to drink, even as we are talking now. We have those who are going to suffer from infections due to gun, gun, gunshots. The people affected are over there. And then, of course, nobody will agree to the loan uh, uh, resolution from Israel. 
it must be all encompassing so that we stand up from here as human beings. That will be my plea. Let them go aside, meet and remove those vexatious items. In the course of discussions, we can have amendments. We can add items that we feel we should add, but we must discuss the Gaza issue in this one for the eighth IPU assembly. That's my position. That was a powerful speech yeah. from our uncommon Senate president. I mean, I loved that speech really because, I mean, I believe I was watching uh, the news earlier this morning about 11 or 14 people had drowned because they were trying to get food, mm. food that was thrown into the ocean, food mm. aid. I mean, this is this situation in Gaza needs needs an end as quickly as possible. But Dr. Abati, well, uh, is this the position of Nigeria? Well, there is a growing international yeah. consensus that there should be immediate ceasefire, you know, and access to humanitarian aid uh, without giving the release of hostages as a condition. Uh, the uh, senior president was speaking at the uh, session of the Interparliamentary Union, IPU, founded in 1899, the main purpose of which is to promote peace and parliamentary debate and understanding. So it was on point in terms of the theme, and he's saying, look, the international community should not talk about ego. We should place emphasis on humanity. A lot of children dying in Gaza, and he recommended, it was a proposal to the union, that they should have a three-man committee to draft a resolution to call for immediate ceasefire. And Absolutely. if they did that, if they did that, you know, that would be uh, in line with also the resolution of the United Nations Security uh, Council. As for Nigeria's position, mm -hmm. the Minister of Foreign Affairs has made it very clear that Nigeria, even if it is non-aligned, is also committed to ensuring access to humanitarian aid and also the cause of peace. Right. So the Nigerian, in terms of our foreign policy, you know, we support you know, humanitarian aid, we support also global peace. Right, fantastic. Yeah, no, we don't have time. We don't have time, but I would like for you to touch on Belumi. Okay. We would like for us to, you know, send some healing prayers to mm. her because she suffered, a, I believe it was a road accident. Belumi is a content creator. Belumi who, um, Nubi. Belumi Nubi. I mean, if we had that uh, picture up, I just wanted you to comment really quickly and, you know, send healing prayers before we take our final stories. Yep, listen, she's been taking this bold uh, trip from London to Lagos by road. And uh, it, it, this was heartbreaking yeah. to see this. And, and these are some of the risks, of course, that you would come across. And she was very close. Yeah. Uh, I believe this happened around, uh, was it around Liberia or so? Sierra Leone um, and Liberia. Sierra Leone yeah. and Liberia. Um, so wishing her a speedy recovery. And uh, I hope she'll be able to get back on the road and, and finish this in a very legendary well way. Said. All right, then. We send healing prayers. We'll take our final story. The founder of Madonna University in Nigeria, Reverend Father Emmanuel Ede, has been trending on social media after he boasted that female students who enroll in the university as virgins always graduate as virgins because of the high morals instilled in them. The Reverend made the statement during the 25th anniversary of the university while highlighting the university's focus on morals and discipline. He also stated that the university has no record of cultism or use of hard drugs, molestation, examination, malpractice, or bullying, and has zero tolerance for sexual immorality. Let's take a look. It is uh, only in this university that it is clearly maintained that girls who, attend, who enter the university as virgins graduate as virgins. They enter our university as virgins and they graduate as virgins. Tell me any other university in the whole world that can, that can maintain it. That is why many people from London, America, England, Germany, when I meet them, they say, Father, we want to marry a girl who is a virgin. And the only way to do that is to come to Madonna University. Wow. People are calling. People are calling him wow. that they want virgin. Do you want a virgin? Virgin, virgin, virgin you know, I'm <laughs> virgin, virgin, virgin bragging thinking? rights. Oh, really? <laughs> How about uh, better bragging rights, like academic uh, positions? Oh, all well, all right. Virgin That's bragging that. rights. <laughs> Dr. Wow. Wow. Oh, Doctor, over to you. <laughs> <laughs> King of virgins. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
You know, as a responsible citizen, yes. I can't sit on television and be discussing virginity. <laughs> but because it may be interpreted yes. as sexist. Mm -hmm. Now, but you will recall that uh, once upon a time in this country, one university was conducting virginity tests. Which is wrong. For, you know, uh, new entrants. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, they, they stopped the uh, virginity test in that particular university that will remain nameless when they discover that, uh, in fact, uh, uh, part of the uh, university campus was beginning to turn into maternity wards. So how did the people who passed the virginity test, how did they end up becoming pregnant? But uh, as I said, I mean, I, I'm not supposed to be talking about veggies. No. But uh, we have a chronic bachelor's here. <laughs> Uh, you I'm know, who, who I'm may be interested <laughs> in going to Madonna <laughs> University <laughs> to, look for, to look for wives. A yes. university that is yes. not producing scholars, well, but is advertising veggies. Not scholars, absolutely. Not, scholars, absolutely. Not, absolutely. not intellectuals, <laughs> not the prowess of the school. They are not, they are not boasting about first class graduates. Yeah. They are boasting see. about veggies. There's nothing you will see in Nigeria. I mean, my, welcome to our country. Well, all right. <laughs> I'd love to thank you all for your great analysis, so as nice. always, on What's Trending. Well, that's all I have for you guys on What's Trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.